So the design of this armor panel works pretty well on paper. So now let's try it out on some cardboard. Welcome everyone, if you're new here, I'm Jason, the creator of Team Rocket Robotics and the Tabletop Battlefield. And for the last year or so, I've been cobbling together my first Antweight Combat Robot, and I'm finally down to figuring out the last design element, which is the armor band that's gonna wrap around it. And when I designed this piece, I'm like, well, we'll have to figure out how to build it another day, and today is that day. So step one is to build a cardboard mock-up, figure out the workflow, and then hopefully, if everything goes well, we'll transfer it to actual UHMW. What I've done is I've recorded the various sizes of the armor panels from my computer onto a little piece of paper got sitting off to the side, and now I'm translating them on this cardboard in a way that should get a shape that's approximately, well, when folded up, it should approximately match the armor panel as how it's modeled in 3D space. We'll see if that works. The problem here is I got to have some very precise measurements, and I'm not entirely sure if those precise measurements are going to be easily carried over from computer to cardboard. So I got the little armor template, at least, you know, about two thirds of the robot done and it fits a little bit better than I thought it would. There's a little bit of a gap right here by the side mount, though that may be an issue with the chassis. I'm not entirely sure. I'll figure that out when I get the final armor band done. Given the fact I did all this measurement by hand, I think it turned out fairly well. However, the caveat here is the fact that the cardboard is fairly flexible compared to the final UHMW armor. Well, that means that I might be able to cheat a little bit and get in the exact position of things with this template piece, where if I do the same process on the actual plastic, it's not gonna work. So I've got one more idea in terms of measuring things out that don't require me to measure everything by hand and get things really precisely right. So let's jump back up to my computer, we'll make some 3D printed templates and try this process one more time. With the design of these robots, I probably have a bit of a infamous reputation in that I use Blender for most of my design work. So while this artistic 3D modeling program can work pretty well, it's not the ideal tool, it's not CAD. And then when it came to this particular part where I'm designing the armor band and converting it into a 3D model to 2D templates, I did run into some limitations. My first attempt required me to have some very specific distances, as well as very specific angles measured out, neither of which Blender's very good at. So when I did print this set of templates out and line them up, I kind of noticed that the armor band got thicker as things went along, so something definitely went sideways. As you can see here as I'm sorting them out. So I had to jump back and come up with a different way to do it. The second attempt went a lot better. I extracted the front face from the model and then from there I could rotate it, clean things up just a little bit and was able to then create a 3D template from there for each of, uh, well, in this case, three of the sides because the other two sides are just mirrors of the first two. And this set of templates worked a lot better. Now it's time to build the final cardboard armor test using these new set of templates that should work pretty well. The normal place where I get my plastics from, the local supplier, doesn't carry 1 16th inch thick UHMW, they only go down on a 1 8th inch. So I had to order this online and what I got was, well, a 4 square feet of 1 16th inch UHMW, but it's uh, a little deformed. <laughs> yeah, anyway, we're going to hope that's not an issue, but we're going to find out. I've got a few things i got to do before I build the final armor. First, I want to see if I can actually get a nice crisp bend to the UHMW, because that's kind of important to this design. And then i got to figure out how I'm going to precisely measure the various bolt holes to attach the armor to the robot. I've got a nice sharp corner here at this process. Let's move on to building the full armor band.
For the record, this is probably one of the most inefficient uses of material I've ever seen. But yeah, that's, that's kind of how things go with this piece. All right, the official mass of the armor and the bolts that attach it is... I think that means the battery is dead. It's just blinking at me. I'll get the other scale. All right, officially, with a working scale, the mast of the armor, and it's one, two, three, four. Why don't they have five bolts? There's number six. And six bolts comes out to 36 grams. When it comes to making the holes for the armor panel to attach to the chassis, what I'm going to do is make a mark on the top of the armor where the hole should be. I've got this fancy little 3D printed template I made off the design, and it's going to let me put the hole at the correct distance from the top of the armor. And just like that, the armor band is on more or less. Um, it got a little bit off size. I don't know how. I'm thinking it was during the stretching process, but I don't know. We'll sort that out later. Either way, at 35 grams, I checked my spreadsheet. I'm still underweight by just a tiny bit, and that's all that really matters. <laughs> Well, well, that's all I got for you guys today. So once again, I'm Jason, the creator of Team Rocker Robotics, as well as the Tabletop Battlefield. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, because in the last and final video in this series, we'll take everything we've done over the last six videos, seven, I don't remember anymore, and we'll put them all together and create a fully functional combat robot. So thank you guys all for watching, and I'll see you later.